Good morning, all of you. It is day 43, day 43, this is crazy, of spiritual healthcare. So welcome, all of you. And uh, this is this is going to be a really, really fun day. Um, I've got a, a, a topic for us today that we normally don't cover. A lot of people don't know about it. I've, I've been teaching it for the longest time on um, uh, my classes, Fireside Ghost Experience, and um, or one of my classes, and that is a subject matter of blue zones. So we'll wait for some more people to log in. Um, it's good to see everybody. Um, this is it's been such a great experience, all of this, you know, being able to to log in and and to talk to everybody every morning. Um, and just to see the support that's been coming in for this has been absolutely amazing. Um, the, uh, the the comments and the and stuff you guys send has just been fantastic. Um, Sarah says, I look great. Thank you so much. I would I you probably look great too. I can't see you. I have no idea. <laughs> you probably look awesome. Um, you know, it's just been wonderful to have everybody just, you know, coming in every morning and, and the emails that you guys have been sending. We've had people from Australia and South Africa and like literally all over the world. It's been so cool. Good morning, Dan. Nice to see you. Um, it, it's just been so neat. And, you know, and people have been finding their own way now to find their connections, which has been so cool to watch. Good morning, Tabitha. How are you? Uh, it's nice to see some new faces. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that if you guys are missing past classes or you want to go back on past spiritual healthcare classes, um, you can go to youtube.com slash entity seeker or entity and they are all there. They are all there. All f well, today it'll be 43. Today it'll be 43. 43 of these damn things. It's crazy. It's crazy. You guys are like, you guys are such troopers. <laughs> you just listen to me every morning. It's, it's so great. Uh, okay. Good morning, Will. Spiritual healthcare is a blue zone. Oh, thank you so much. Um, that means a lot. We're gonna be talking about blue zones today and I'm excited about that because I want to talk about those in relation to paranormal activity uh, and uh, and what that means and what it means for a community to become a blue zone and how we can start moving that forward as well. Good morning Christopher and Corey and Des. Nice to see you guys. Um, it's just yeah so this is gonna be so good. I'm, I'm excited. I hope you guys had a great evening yesterday. It was nice here. I don't know what it was like where you guys are but it was, it was really nice. Um, it was quite a lovely day and we've got a really lovely day out today as well. So make sure you're opening your windows if you've got nice weather where you are, because we definitely, we, we definitely are warming up here very <laughs> slowly. Our snow's gone. So that's, that's amazing. I'm in shorts too. I'm actually in shorts today, which is, which is crazy. Um, so it's good to see everybody. And, um, uh, I want to talk about a case that I worked with here in Edmonton and had been have been had been working on for for quite a while, um, as well as as I say the incorporation of blue zones and what they can mean for us as a society and community and how it affects paranormal phenomena and all of that kind of thing. It's going to be really cool. Good morning, Nigel. Good morning, Kaz. Nice to see you guys. Uh, as always, it's so nice to like, you know, see all the familiar faces coming up and, and popping up. It's so cool. Um, it's just so awesome to be able to plug in every morning and, uh, and do this and realize that distance is so much, it's so much of it's in our heads, you know, like, uh, you know, we can do this every morning and come together. Good morning, Irene. Nice to see you. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's just, yeah, this is, this is so great. So the cool thing about, I want to crack into the idea of blue zones for you guys, because they are a, they're not a new phenomenon, but they don't seem to be advertised, I think, as much as they should be. And what it is was actually developed by a, um, uh, a fellow, a freelance journalist from National Geographic, um, by the name of Dan Butner, who basically was put in charge of finding the happiest places in the world, happiest places in the world. And there was some criteria, of course, that they came up with uh, to figure out what those happy places were. And we're going to go into that in a little bit. Um, and he literally toured the world finding these locations. And it was a phenomenal experiment. And what he found was not what he expected. Um, he was, I think, I think a lot of people, especially in the West, were expecting, um, you know, wealthier communities with, you know, lots of, uh, 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 you know, support systems in terms of, you know, uh, just government and, and that kind of thing, like a structured 
different government and also they were expecting I think a different list of, of criteria than what they actually got and um, it's so interesting to be able to go into some of these these locations um, like Nicoya Costa Rica, Okinawa Japan, um, Loma Linda California um, there's a lot of them out there most of them most of them are not here <laughs> they're not here yeah we like to think that you know there's these these really happy places that, you know, and when we do have them, we definitely do have them. But in order to be considered a blue zone, you've got to be over and above. Uh, and we're going to go through what that looks like within the communities um, and all and what they're doing. What are they doing so that we can start to implement all of that here um, and in our own experience? Because we don't have to wait for community to do it. We can start that now. Um, and as I say, we'll take a look at how it affects the paranormal activity that's there because how they view it versus how other people and in other communities view it, it's very, very different. So we're going to go through all of that. It's going to be really good. Um, so I wanted to start off with talking about some of the blue zones and I actually ended up writing about it in my book quite extensively because I thought it was so significant. Um, so I'm going to read you guys a little bit of a segment from that to get us going with this so you guys can understand what blue zones are uh, because they are, they, they are very specific, as I say, very specific criteria that they ironed out. So check this out. There's no better example of this in the world than areas designated as blue zones. The Blue Zones project has been embraced by places across the globe, and it focuses on making well-being the top priority for all the people living there. It's a proven model for transforming spiritual, physical, and emotional health, and communities that have embraced it have noticed double-digit drops, double-digit drops in obesity and smoking. Uh, they sport some of the longest living people in the world. Measurable drops in employee absenteeism. The rates of diseases such as cancer and Alzheimer drops to near non-existence. They don't just rely on individual behavior change, but they improve community health by making permanent and semi-permanent changes, which include public spaces, so more parks, lakes, walking paths, improving infrastructure, grocery stores, schools, cafeterias, employers, uh, faith-based organizations, restaurants, and community involvement, and perhaps more notably, the difference in haunting phenomenon is also palpable. And it is really true. So this is the crazy thing about Blue Zones, is that they are taking a lot of areas by storm right now. Um, and the academics refer to a, a very specific type of happiness that actually comes from the Greek word for happy. Um, and it was made popular, believe it or not, by Aristotle. It, so it just started a really, really, really long time ago. Um, so it, they've basically figured out a structure called the life satisfaction structure. And it's rated essentially like 1 through 10 and it's considered the gold standard of measuring well-being. So this is, as I say, something that has come out that's been really, really thought about. And it came out in the World Happiness Report that about three quarters of happiness is driven by six specific variables, six of them. Okay, so that's health, strong economic growth, trust, generosity, freedom, and the, and the quality of relationships. So we've got a very specific set of, of standards here. And as I say, when we look at how they are viewing not only their communities, but how they're seeing things like hauntings, how they're seeing things like um, interaction with non-physical and, and spirit and things like that, it's not taken as this terrifying, you know, frightening, we've got to get a scare out of it attitude that we often will see perpetuated in the Western culture. It's very different there. Um, they see it as something to promote and when their when and when of course their well-being rises and this is the cool part when their well-being rises of course the interaction that they're getting with non-physical and hauntings is very different so when they end up say for example dealing with um, you know they, they say a house is haunted or or uh, you know they're communicating with lost loved ones and things like that they're not having frightening experiences just because their community is established differently. Everything is established in a way that their vibration raises, their well-being is, is you know, in that high-flying, pure positive energy. So the interactions that they're attracting are very different. It's really interesting. So the Blue Zones, when they decided that they were going to figure out exactly how these places were working, 
what they wanted to do was pick out the nine features of these locations that make the most difference. So the nine features, and they called them the power nine, okay, the power nine. Um, and one of them was, the, or the first one I think, which is, is so important, is that they move a lot more naturally. There's a lot more walking, there's a lot more um, getting out into nature, um, there's a lot more things like biking uh, and that kind of thing. Um, they're just constantly active, um, growing gardens, all of that kind of thing, which I find so cool considering that's what we're kind of moving back to right now with, with the pandemic, right? Where a lot of people are out there build, um, growing gardens. And I don't know about where you guys are, but I know in Alberta, um, they are actually deeming greenhouses and things like that essential services so that people can come and garden and, and, and build gardens. Um, one of the big ones is, the, which is the second feature, which is the fact that they all have purpose. Purpose is a big deal. And we've talked about this in spiritual healthcare before, the, the importance of having a vision to move forward. Because when we have a vision, then all of these little glitches, like these little things that get in the way of what we're, what we're trying to do and accomplish, don't seem so damn big. If something goes wrong, if you've got that vision, that long vision, it doesn't seem, you don't get hung up on the little thing or you don't get hung up, for example, on the criticism that comes up where people start, you know, nagging at you or telling you that you can't do it. Um, or, you know, if, if there's a glitch, like, you know, suddenly you lose money or something like that, you're not as hammered by it as if you, you don't have that vision. If you're, if you're really stuck in the short term, it really makes a big difference. And interestingly, if you have a vision, if you have something that's clear, here's the cool part about this, is that you, it will actually add statistically seven years to your life, seven years, bam, instantly. All you gotta do, have a vision, seven extra years. Like it's pretty cool. Um, so the other thing that they do that we've been talking about so frequently here on spiritual healthcare, and especially in relating to um, uh, hauntings and things like that and the escalation of hauntings is processing stress. So processing stress is one of the, with the key power nine factors uh, with blue zones and it's how they deal with this stuff. Um, so for example, instead of quashing it and sort of holding it as a, um, a, a badge of honor, because so often in our society, we do, we hold stress as this badge of honor. You know, if you're really stressed then you're busy, um, or, uh, uh, you know, if people will ignore or, you know, push aside things that are bothering them. And here's the thing is that the people who are processing this stuff, who are just statistically going through it, they are finding that they are just they are just adding years to their life. They're, they're decreasing things like heart problems and, and things like that. Um, so that's really key is being able to process that kind of thing. Um, one of the other big ones, which I think is huge is the 80% rule. Okay. It's something called the 80% rule. Um, and in Okinawa, they, they read, this is a big thing in, in Japan. Um, and basically, uh, the Confucian mantra said that before it said it before meals, which reminds them to basically stop eating when their stomachs are 80% full. They don't stuff themselves. Okay. So they're not like overflowing with food by the time they're done eating. So they've got a rule where 80%, 80% and you stop. So it's interesting. Um, lots of greens on the menu there, which is a big deal. Um, wine is actually a really big staple, uh, which is, you know, not unhealthy amounts of it and not to the point of being drunk, obviously, but, um, wine is a big deal, especially in, in blue zones like Sardinia, Italy. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. Um, probably one of the most unique ones, which I think is so important, which the West misses out on quite frequently is that sense of belonging. Um, that's a one that's boosted often in the blue zones. Um, and during when you get like a, a, a situation where people are feeling, feeling alone or lonely or anything like that, and they don't feel like they're belonging to a bigger whole, um, uh, automatically you're getting a, like higher stress rates, um, higher mortality rates and things like that. So it can end up creating a difference of 14 extra years in people's lives. Sense of belonging, sense of belonging. That's all it is. Uh, 14 extra years. It's really, it's pretty cool. Um, and the last, the last two, um, 
number the the first one being family first um family is as is put at the forefront i think this is something very interesting with with blue zones as well um and something that i tell my clients to come back to again and again when i'm dealing with with haunting situations is that oftentimes when we're dealing with a negative haunting there's a disconnect somewhere within a family group there's something going on um and you don't necessarily know where where that is or where that healing is and sometimes you have to be able to look towards the type of phenomenon or the the uh, um, the entity itself to kind of figure out what that mirror is looking like because oftentimes when we get these these negative hauntings they are so often that reflection of the wound that wasn't healed to begin with or it's a reflection of the dysfunction in a relationship or it's a reflection of the 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 upset or um, disharmony that's going on in, in those people's experience. It, it almost always is a reflection of that. Um, and you can start to pick out where the dysfunction is based on the, the entity's behavior, which is kind of cool. Um, so it's something really important. And then the Okinawans have a, a, a great uh, method and research from Framingham studies actually sh showed unhealthy behaviors like smoking, obesity, um, and whatnot are actually contagious contagious Isn't that crazy like crazy contagious so for example if you've got nine friends in your group that all smoke and you don't smoke guess what chances are you're gonna be smoking um, so here's the big deal with things with with that concept okay and I want to really touch on this because it's so important especially when it comes to to haunting activity um, it when we get around people who are toxic, who are, um, you know, not helping themselves. And they might not even know, they might not even, they might be super good people, but they might be just those, those people that don't want to grow. Sometimes the people that don't want to grow are more toxic than, than somebody who's just being a bully. Um, and you know, they will quash or, you know, put a stick in the in the wheel of your business or whatever they're doing as best they can in order to slow you down so that you can't go forward and move into the things that you need to move into um, I had I've had experience with this myself um, you know where somebody will literally put a smile on their face and tell you they're supporting you and they will you will move along um, you know throughout you know your experience and they are just throwing wrenches into whatever they can they're throwing wrenches uh, Marge is saying that's happened to her it, absolutely I think it's so many people so many people have had this go on and they haven't recognized because sometimes what it is sometimes man it's, it's sometimes it's somebody in your house it is in your house and that's something that we we really do have to pay attention to um, you know we're, we're used to hearing about this kind of thing from maybe an opposing business or you know the competition or something like that like where there's a feud going on but man sometimes it's coming from your family it's coming from inside and we got to we got to pay attention to who those people are who are we surrounding ourselves with you know every time you move into happiness or you move forward you know are they turning around and telling you that you know um, you know you're hurting them or you're hurting their feelings or what you know like what's going what is being said that is you know being being thrown into the wrench of of your your dream what you want to be doing um uh, there's yeah see more more people more people are saying it's it's happened to them you know it is so true um and we have to be conscious of the messaging the messaging that we're getting because if we're being made to feel bad about who we are if we're being if if that's going on that's not your collective that's not your those those aren't your people you don't you don't want that um so it's something to be really really conscious of and pay attention to so how this reflects in terms of of hauntings um how does it how what does it matter well oftentimes what we'll do is we end up in a situation we're surrounding ourselves with people who for example are um you know you know maybe they're doing that maybe they are slowly kind of eking us down maybe that maybe these people are better than you know people we've had before but maybe it's not where we need to be that's the other thing don't settle don't do that don't settle um it, maybe these people are you know they're better than before but they're not not where we need to be and we tend to get stuck with those groups we really do we get into a comfortable rut and we tend to get stuck with those group that group of people just because it's better than what we had previously 
And when we get into a situation where we've got a haunting, for instance, um, and we get into one of these kind of toxic ruts with, with other individuals, um, that slowly begins to erode not only our self-worth and our self-esteem, but it begins to erode the amount that we can get joy out of ourselves, out of our own internal dialogue, um, out of what's going on around us, all of that kind of thing. It starts to erode everything. And because of that, we start to sort of slip and then we end up with, with you know, in range of some activity, you know, haunting activity that just sucks. Um, it's just not good stuff. And we can't really figure out at that point how we got there. So we have to be really conscious of what it is we're looking at. And it doesn't always have to come out in the form of a haunting. Sometimes it comes out in the form of, of finances or sometimes it comes out in the form of, of just realizing that you're depressed all of a sudden. Um, you know, coming to the, the awareness that it's like, oh my God, I'm, I'm depressed and I don't know why. We have to take a really hard look at, at that what, which is around us. Um, to make sure we're setting ourselves up for success in the long run. Are we setting ourselves up for success? Um, and that is a conscious decision and conscious effort. Um, so the blue zones are so cool because as I say, these are the longest living people in the world. They prioritize family and the, the governments and things like that are set up. They're set up for well-being. So they, people, for example, they get maternity leave. Um, you know, these are not super rich communities, many of them. They're, just, they're not, they're not super wealthy, um, but they take time out of their day to dance. Um, they usually close down around, you know, four or five o'clock to make sure they can, everybody can sort of plug back in with their families. As I say, they process stress. Everything that I basically talk about with my clients on a one-on-one -on -one basis, these people have managed to push this into this incredible community and their concept of dealing with hauntings and non-physical is very, very different. They see it as something that is a spiritual practice, connecting in with those loved ones that we've, that you've, that have passed away, that you feel like you've lost. They don't feel that way about it. It's time for them to honor that relationship. Um, so doing things like meditation, um, making sure that they are plugging in in different ways to whatever spiritually they're doing, whatever that looks like. And I mean, this is, this is cross religion. So there, there's tons of, of different religions that are practicing this kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's a really, it's an incredible practice. So when they're, when they run into a situation, uh, for example, that includes something that is, you know, negative or things like that. They treat it very differently. They treat a, a, a negative haunting very uniquely um, and they all have a different process for it, but it's a lot more rare there than it is in, in a place like uh, uh, the West in, in America or Canada. Um, and it's very interesting. So one of the examples that is, is so neat comes out of Okinawa, Japan. And uh, Okinawa, of course, is famous for, for their, their American military base as well that is there. Uh, and one year they decided that they were going to, the Americans were going to build this creepy haunted house. They were going to, you know, give the Okinawans a taste of the West and be like, okay, we're going to build this, you know, scary haunted house and we're going to invite all the kids. And they, they proposed this idea and the Okinawans couldn't understand it. They said, well, well why would you do that? And they said, well, no, it's really fun. This is an American tradition. It's really, it's cool. Um, you know, we get a scare out of it and there's ghosts and there's all this, you know, it's frightening. And what was funny was that the only ones that showed up were the Americans. <laughs> the Okinawans couldn't, they didn't get it because to them, non-physical and that relationship isn't a negative thing and it's not scary to them. It's just something that is natural, it's something that's free flowing, uh, and they couldn't understand the, the fascination with the idea that it was uh, supposed to be something really frightening. So it was, it's really interesting, very different way of understanding um, all of this phenomenon. Uh, I've investigated a, a number of times uh, this uh, museum here in Alberta, and uh, it, was, it was interesting because we had all of the museum employees uh, and the museum was under renovations at the time as well. So not only were we dealing with the employees, but we were dealing with the contracted people who were coming in and doing electrics and all of that kind of thing. And they had ramped themselves into a situation where they were terrified to come to work terrified like the electrician he couldn't he wouldn't even come back after a while he was so freaked out the uh the staff had a buddy system to lock up at night 
Um, they wouldn't, they weren't allowed to be in there alone. Um, they were experiencing everything from these huge, um, uh, trays of maps that were getting thrown across the room to, um, huge pieces of oak furniture that were moving around on the upper level by themselves. Um, they, the, uh, uh electricians, when they were there at night, um, they would have things happen to them. Like benches would get pushed in front of them and they would fall. Um, also like all sorts of just crazy stuff like that. And what was so interesting about this case was it really was a matter of breaking down the paradigm for them that they had going and the, the rut that they'd gotten themselves into. Because when we get a case like this, here's the, here's the key, um, is that, you know, something will happen and then that person gets frightened and then they go home and then they call their coworkers and then their coworkers get freaked out and then they can't let it go and they think about it all night. So by the morning, what state of mind are they in when they go back? They're freaked out. They're just, they're terrified. They're freaked out. They're waiting for something else to happen. And guess what? Law of attraction is a reliant thing. It will happen again. And bam, they get into another incident. And all of a sudden we're, we're snowballing over and over and over again, this mindset of fear, uh, coupled with this state of expectation and always looking over your shoulder. So as we move them through this process, we had to be able to start to break down what it is that they were experiencing and how they had to change their dialogue in their heads when they went home at night. Um, and when they started to do that, when we started to break that habit down, we started to see this shift in the community of, of employees. And once that shift in the community of employees started and they began to focus more on their well-being, start to pay attention to less of what they didn't want and more of what they do want, um, then all of a sudden we start to see this, this, this change in the environment. And the great thing is what I love about this is that you talk to the new employees who've come into the museum to work and they had no idea it was haunted. No clue, no clue. Um, so it really wasn't, it's really not about being able to, to force whatever's on the inside out. Cause as soon as you put your attention somewhere, guess what happens? You're going to get more of it. You just are, you're just going to get more of it. So you have to be able to unplug from what it is that you're afraid of, from what it is that you are, you know, uh, freaked out about or whatever, and be able to number one, rewrite the dialogue, rewrite the dialogue. How are you explaining this to yourself? You know, are you telling a good story? Are you telling a positive story? Are you, are you basing what you're saying to yourself on facts or are you making up a negative connotation to what that is? Because those are two very, very different things. Um, and the people in the blue zones have done a, such a fantastic job of being able to, to unplug a little bit from their, their story and refocus on and re uh, religiously refocus just, you know, all the time, every day. Um, and begin to start to change what it is that they're doing. And they've made such a massive difference in their communities. I had the privilege a number of years back of visiting um, a few of the blue zones in California. Uh, and it was absolutely incredible. And one of probably one of the most unique locations for me, uh, which is a, a location that is, is slowly be, was, was becoming at the time, at least um, more of a blue zone, uh, was in uh, Palos Verdes. And it was a beautiful place. Um, called the Wayfarer's Chapel, it's the glass chapel. And it was a beautiful garden and it was a, it was a church basically. Um, and it was completely made out of glass. It sat on the bluffs of, of the ocean. So you could see the ocean and you were just connected to nature in this incredible way. Um, and they had these amazing flower gardens and the flower gardens, here's the cool thing, were tended to by a local spirit um, who would come and was seen at the flower gardens all the time. And they were tended to by, by the spirit who they, they called, they basically nicknamed the gardener. And, uh, I'm, I'm not too sure if they ever figured out who he was, but he was, he was within, within that area. And it was, it was full of hummingbirds. The whole, the whole garden was full of hummingbirds. Uh, it was, it was just the coolest thing. Um, so, you know, you get these locations and as I say, this is not necessarily a religious thing. Um, but this was just one of those locations that they had managed to blend. I think that, that, um, that combination of, of heart and mind and body and nature, and they were able to bring that together and you could sit there for hours. Like it was, it was absolutely the most beautiful place I've ever been. Um, so that being said, that being said, um, I wanted to give you guys an awesome, um, 
to do today and awesome process. Um, we talked about the power of nine uh, and the to do I'm going to give you is actually all interlinked with this. Um, so the Blue Zones have a website called bluezones.com. Okay, bluezones.com. And on there, not only can you guys go and, and take a look at Blue Zones, watch the videos, watch the TED Talks, because there's been a number of TED Talks on them um, for you guys to check out. But also, there is an entire section on the website about Blue Zone lessons. Blue Zone lessons. There's meal planners. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, so I'm going to post the link to bluezones.com on uh, the Entity Seeker webpage so that you guys can, can go click on it um, and check it out. Um, there's recipes. There's cities. There's the speaking. There's way of life activities. All sorts of stuff. Um, so that if you guys want to begin to bring this into your lives right now and maybe even into the community um, Because there's a number of places right now that are working towards becoming blue zones So maybe you're going to be the catalyst for your area um, But I'm going to post that online so you guys can find it and check it out Because it is it's just the, it is the coolest damn thing um, so Yeah, blue zones. They're so good so good. So I can't let you guys go without doing our health affirmations. I noticed there's a few new people logging in this morning. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know again, if you are wanting to join in on past classes and look up like other things we've done or work or anything like that, go to entityseeker.ca or youtube.com slash entityseeker. Uh, and all of our, uh, spiritual healthcare classes are there. Everything. It's all there. So if you guys want to go back on something, it's available. But we have to do our health affirmations before we go. We want our, uh, our, you know, our vibrations and, and our emotions to be in the right space so that we can go into the day in alignment and be healthy. Um, so everybody take a breath. It is natural for my body to be well. Even if I don't know what to do in order to get better, my body does. I have trillions of cells with individual consciousness and they are learning to achieve individual balance. When this condition began, I didn't know what I know now. I don't need to understand the cause of this illness. I only need to gently eventually release this illness. It doesn't matter how it got started because it's reversing its course right now. And there's no hurry about any of this. My body knows what to do. Well-being is natural to me, and my inner being is intricately aware of my physical body. My cells are asking for what they need in order to thrive, and Source is answering those requests. I'm in very good hands. My only work is to relax and breathe, and I can do that easily. Everybody take a breath. Thank you so much, everybody, for another awesome morning of spiritual health care. You guys are ma what makes this work and what makes this platform work and why I do this every single morning. So please join me again tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Every day we do that. Every day we're here doing spiritual health care um, and talking about this stuff with tools and resources and, and talking the paranormal and all that kind of thing. So please come back, join us, share this with, with people. Um, you know, we want this information out there so that people can, uh, you know, utilize it for themselves and, and find it and, and come join us every morning. You know, we, we really, we really want to want to pursue that. Uh, and it's just such a, it, it's such a wonderful ability to be able to gather every day. And I just, I love it so much. So thank you guys again. So, so, so much. Uh, Paranormal 911, of course, will be on tonight in America. Uh, so I hope you guys, uh, you know, the Americans at least can tune into that this evening. Um, it's a great season so far. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Anyway, I will post a link to bluezones.com on uh, Entity Seeker uh, .ca and the Facebook page so you guys can find it. Have a wonderful, wonderful sunny day, you guys. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.